This is Grow With The Bros, hosted by Ryan and Ken Parsons, founders of the Brothers That Just Do Gutters. Welcome to another episode of Bro Brainstorm. We've made every mistake in the book so you don't have to. Our time to evolve as business owners is now. Let's grow together. On today's episode, we're going to talk about having regular meetings and how they can change your business. We're also going to discuss the structure of a meeting as well. So, Ryan, to kick it off here, what type of meetings do we have here at headquarters? Oh, man. We have all sorts of meetings. Um, but I was just like thinking about like the first time we ever had meetings, like way back in the day, and how they sucked a <laughs> lot. Um, uh. But we knew we were supposed to have meetings, and then we... You know, we would start to have them, and now, and we'll go, we'll we'll go back to that. But as I'm thinking about this and going over the podcast, I'm thinking about these these meetings that we used to have versus the meetings that we have now, and it is a journey. You know, it doesn't just all of a sudden become these awesome uh, meetings like we do have now. But um, so the types of meetings. So basically, you've got your major departments. You've got um, you've got your production department. You've got the office. You've got marketing. You've got sales, so and then you've got your management team, and, and it all depends on the size of your company. The first time we ever had a meeting, the only people we had were installers. And do uh, you remember those meetings back in uh, Noxon wow. Road? You know when we started to like sit down and have people in. Yeah, we even had a printed agenda and, and we stuff. We did. Yeah, yeah. We did. Oh, that reminds me. Joe Monty, a friend of mine, owns an awning business. He used to like make fun of us. He's like. You guys in your gutter business, you run your business like it's a Fortune 500 company. And you're just like these <laughs> gutter guys. And he, he would say it like joking and, and like he was proud of us and what we were doing. But I remember he was like, who do you think you are? In a good way. I love Joe. But, but that being said, um, that's, that's a really important point that you bring out is because, there, you know, and that has everything to do with vision. You know, even if you are a smaller company, Running it like you are a Fortune 500 company is what's going to help you to get there eventually. Uh, and, it, you know, obviously those things don't happen overnight. So uh, tell me a little bit more about that. How, what, what, give us a, a sneak peek into what encompasses a meeting. You know, what, okay. give us an example of what that looks like. So any book you read or anything that you Google on the Internet, they say that every meeting um, needs a PAL, a P-A-L, Purpose, Agenda, and length. Right. So you don't need to listen to this podcast to learn that, but that's so true. And that's really important for the people that are coming to a meeting. There's nothing worse than saying, hey guys, we got to meet. What are you doing, you know, today at two? Right. And then people are just walking in and then you just start talking. There's no agenda. They mm -hmm. don't know when this is going to end. Yeah. So that is definitely one of the most important things that you can have is a purpose. Why are we meeting? Why? Yeah. Can't this be an email? Why can't you just tell me what you want to tell me? Why is this a meeting? So the purpose, an agenda. Yeah. And I, I love agendas that literally have time slots. Like when you can see, you know, we're going to talk about this for, you know, five minutes. We're going to take 20 minutes on this. And so the more you can dial that meeting in, the better it's going to be. So with that said, uh, you really don't want to walk into a meeting. If you're running the meeting, you should be prepared. You would want to walk into that meeting. So when you have a purpose agenda in length, it forces you to think about how we're going to run this and what are we going to uh, do and how, how do we stay on track to the thing that we're meeting about. All right. All right. So, so when, uh, when you're putting meetings on your, your calendar and you're excited about them, it's probably because you're probably doing a pretty good job and, and people in your company are giving you good feedback. And that would probably be a litmus test, if you will, to, to know that you're doing a good job with a meeting. Or if they say, oh, another meeting, and you know you can read their body language or, <laughs> or maybe you know, you'll have somebody that'll speak up and say, why do we have to do this again? Uh, that's probably, so how do, you, how, do you, how do you make it so that that that's not the case and that people are excited to be there. You know, I, I wish I could say people are excited to come to meetings around here. I don't know if people are excited. I think it is more of like, because it's scheduled, it's not out of nowhere, that it's something that we do. But I feel like once we're there, people do get the value out of it, that they see it. I don't think it's something that people are like, 
oh my gosh, it's Monday or Tuesday. I can't wait to get to work early and have a meeting. I don't know if that's what's happening. I've, I've had people tell us that they really love our quarterly meetings and remind me to talk about that one. I wasn't thinking about that one, but people will say, I love the quarterly meeting where we go over the uh, benchmarking and the financials and you take, do a breakdown of how the company did. So I think there are certain meetings that might have that, but if you're doing sales meetings every week, I think it just becomes part of the job. And if people aren't dreading it, I think you've done a really good job. So what about a, that's, that's good. So it's a couple things you hit on there. So what if you're a smaller company and you are the salesperson? Do I have a meeting with myself? What do I, what do, I do there in a situation like that? You know, what kind of, um, what do I do when I'm, you know, don't have a sales rep, but I don't have somebody in my field that is ready to do a meeting? How do, how hmm. do, you, how do you get from small to getting it to, to a point where, so if you're doing everything, so if you're like an owner, operator, salesperson, you, is that what you're talking about? You're doing everything? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say get a mentor. You, you, it's always good to have somebody hold you accountable. Right. And meetings are really, there's an accountability level to it. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to grow a business and you don't want to stay as an owner, operator, salesperson, marketing, back office, if you don't want to wear all those hats, one of the best ways to get through that is to maybe have a mentor, hire a coach, you, you know, or pick your spouse, somebody that's going to hold you accountable for the next step. Right. But as soon as you have that first employee, so let's just say that is your situation and now you've got one guy and they're either they're doing the work and you're doing it with them, you now have the basis to meet. So what would you say as far as the structure of a good meeting, what would you say is what's, what's in, in, involved in that? What's involved in having a great meeting? All right. So it all depends on who you're meeting with. Okay. Right. So we already know that a purpose, agenda, and length. So let's just pick on. Um, so I have one of the field meetings right here. So what we do once a week, and I'm not part of this meeting uh, often. And if I am part of the meeting, it's just sitting in to see how it's going and listen to what's happening. But basically having the entire field team. That was pretty much the first meeting we ever started with. So we love to start out meetings with a quote. That's one of the things that we do, and we like to talk about our core values, and um, not every meeting, I wish we did talk about our core values at every meeting, I think that's important that we do forget to sometimes, but um, so ex for instance, let's just say we're having a meeting with our field installers, and we'd like to talk to them more about upgrading clients, you know, hey, you're going there for a gutter cleaning, how hard would it be to get them to maybe sign up for another gutter cleaning, or maybe get a gutter guard? So an additional work order, getting an upsell or whatever you want to do. So having that purpose and topic, I'm going to pick a quote for that meeting that maybe can resonate with that team. So for instance, I would say, there's a quote by Zig Ziglar. I have always said that everyone is in sales. Maybe you don't hold the title of salesperson, but if the business you are in requires you to deal with people, you, my friend, are in sales. So I love that, everybody's in sales. So that kind of sets the tone of the meeting, so that quote, and I love numbers in meetings. You right. know, I feel right. like we're playing a game. Numbers tell the story, right? Oh my gosh. Numbers tell the story, and depending on who you show the numbers to, they're gonna come up with a different story. Right. So it is important to, to control the narrative, and I feel like a lot of us run our businesses as if we're not keeping score. So when you've got employees that go out and work every single day in the field, I don't care what you do, and they don't know necessarily how much the jobs are, or how much goes to marketing or anything that's involved in it, they start to build their own story right. in their head. Or probably, what is winning? And probably, probably the math that they do in their head probably is a little skewed, wouldn't you say? Everybody. I, I remember, Everybody's math is skewed. I remember se several years ago, uh, before we even franchised, uh, there was, uh, I think it may, might have been our field supervisor had asked one of the guys, how much do you think Ken and Ryan make? And uh, he said, well, they just had a meeting and they did a million dollars in gross revenue. And I guess they probably bring about $500,000 home apiece. 
<laughs> I wish. Is so, that, so yeah. I really think that's great because uh, if, you, if you're including numbers in the in the, in, the, in the meetings and and your employees are having a, a, an understanding of what goes into running a business, is from what you're saying, uh, they have a better, uh, more of an objective uh, view of. Yeah of the things that go into and all the hard work and, and, and all the moving parts and you know the insurance, the gas and all those things are really important for guys I think to know. Plus you, you're talking more about uh, numbers too. And, and you know, tell us about that too. Like them knowing the numbers, why is it important for somebody in the field? I mean, just go out and hang the gutters. You know, you, you don't need to know what, what everything goes to. Some people might feel that way. Why, why do you feel that sharing numbers with uh, people in the business is important. I feel like you need to know what winning looks like. You know, right. for example, when my kids started to play sports, they would go play basketball and they wouldn't keep score. And it really confuses the kids, you know, and I know they're just trying to practice and they're just trying to get good at dribbling and not traveling and they didn't really keep score. And I, and once you start keeping score, the kids now know what they're trying to play for. You know, and I don't, you know, and when I think of our business, when you've got people every day going out and they're doing their job and they, whether they think they're doing a good job or they might not be doing a good job, if they know what the score is. So for example, if we have a goal of $2,000 a day per crew, they know that that's what winning looks like. Mm. So I think no matter what your position is in the company, you know, whether you're in marketing, like for marketing, they, they know how many leads a company needs. So if this franchise needs 200 leads that month, the marketing team now has a goal of like, all right, 200 leads, if we can buy them for this much amount and we can maybe put this much money towards marketing, maybe we can hit that goal. Mm. And so I would say having KPIs, key performance indicators, I don't, no matter what you're doing, so now the marketing team knows if it's halfway through the month and they're at 110 leads, they're like, wow, guys, we're trending to hit the goal. Right. So now they know what winning looks like. Right. Too many people do their job and they don't know what winning looks like. And then they get a meeting or have a review only to be told, you know what? You're really not performing the way we hoped. And they're like, what do you mean? Why would nobody tell me? Right. So I love meetings because it literally... It, 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 it tallies a score. If it's a weekly meeting, every week you know what that score is. Right. And I know we go deeper daily. We want to know what the score is daily, even I, hourly. I think that's a great analogy with the sports team because I remember even when I played sports and even when we watched sports on TV, I mean, it's something that everyone I think can relate to is you're always looking at the scoreboard. Yeah. I mean, when I was wrestling, I was always looking at the scoreboard. I mean, I knew how many. Now, was that from I your had. back that you were looking at it? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. So, yes, keeping score in your company is a lot like uh, playing sports. You know, you're always looking whether you're watching the game or involved in the actual game. Uh, you're always looking at the scoreboard. So I think that's great how that applies to business. And, you know, sharing that information with the employees really helps them to understand what it is that they need to achieve on a regular basis to have success. But it also, I think, lets them know that there's a lot that goes into running a business. And I think they appreciate that, too, because they see that eventually when you show those kinds of numbers that, you know, we're all a team working together yeah. to achieve uh to, to make the business, the company better so that everybody can achieve their personal goals. For sure. Right? So, and if I want to make more money, um, I kind of know, you know, how I need to do that too, because the numbers are being shared. And yeah. if the numbers are being shared, there's probably a lot of other things too that um, that company has as far as them being able to move up and, 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 and achieve what they want to achieve as well. Yeah. So that's great. So, Going over the numbers, so oh, okay. in each meeting, so if we start right. out with a quote, a core value, something like that, and then we're going into the numbers, you know, how'd we do, how'd we win that week, and then I, I love reading satisfaction surveys. So when we get surveys back that we're actually reading them to the, um, the installers, to the people involved, 
and we're getting that you know positive or negative feedback sometimes somebody says they didn't clean up very well so that's a really big part that's good for morale too you know if you have, oh yeah you're bringing that plus it uh, holds a, a level of accountability too to the guys on a regular basis because you're going over those things and obviously we all want people to be proud of us we want to get good reviews and we also know how important reviews are to the business so that's great that having that kind of education and feedback for your team is going to be huge uh, for them as well. And, and, and it might be even, you know, if a team, one of the teams is not really doing as well, a motivator for them to want to do, to do better on the next jobs and maybe, yeah. you know, do a little bit better of walking around the house and picking up <laughs> all the scrap and the screws. So it, it, it more more of the reviews that I see coming in uh, from customers is has to really do about the experience that yeah. they're that that is going. So I think that's great that talking about that in meetings is awesome. Yeah, and so then it gets into what are we what are so those are like this is what we're doing every time, and then it gets into now I've got my entire installation team, whether it's one guy or 10 guys, what is it that we can train on? What's a relevant topic that we can do? And like I said, if we're talking about upselling, now let's let's do something about that. Hey, let's let's do a scenario. Let's pull out the job from last week and say, hey, this I see the pictures from this job. We just did a gutter cleaning. Did anybody try and see if they wanted guards? Hmm. No, well, why not? Uh, I didn't really think of it. All right, well then let's let's role play that scenario. Mm. How do we go about it? So now you're bringing a training in. So I don't want to get too bogged down into the um, the field one because I know we're going to probably do a, an entire segment on that as well as the financials. If you're thinking about starting to show your books, there's a certain way to do it because if you're only showing one side of the coin, for example, hey guys, we need twenty thousand dollars of revenue a week. You know, that's not healthy either. It is important to show the entire balance of how the company works. So there is something to that that I don't want everyone to just start talking about their numbers without having a, a complete plan of how to talk about those numbers. Right. All right. So you asked me, um, so what other meetings? I know we want to cover the other meetings well, that we do. Well, just real quick to recap. Sure. Can you tell us again? What was that? P -A -L? Oh, great. Purpose, agenda, length. Right. And we like all of our meetings to have a quote, core value go over the numbers, read the satisfaction surveys, talk about your reputation, pick a relevant topic or relevant training. Hmm. So, And, and, and I, I've noticed too in some of the meetings that um, you guys talk about at the end, uh, what, 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 what wins, wins that the guys, so wins, so the guys get to give some feedback of what that looks like. All right, so we'll talk about that in the sales section, but what the guys started to do, and, and what's crazy, and this is my favorite part, so, we started all this out and we did meetings and then we came up with just kind of what I shared with you. But to, for me to not have to be in those meetings every week and then I stop by mm -hmm. to see the flavors that they've added on their own, the parts of the meeting that was never part of our original vision. So what the guys in the, in the field started doing was this thing called shout outs. And it's really yeah, cool right. to see a bunch of guys that are construction workers and, and typically, you know, if you, you're in construction, um, they have a good time, you know, making fun of each other in the nicest way possible. But then to see them say, hey, I got a shout out, you know, uh, Jeff, you killed it last week. You were on my crew because, you know, whatever. And you, I had you for the week. I'm so impressed with what you did. Blows your mind to that's see that awesome. happening and that kind of So that's a great culture, cu culture right? Yeah. Culture, for you sure. Know, the, the, you know, having a pal as a business strategy to, to uh, educate and hold people accountable uh, but also you know when you have those kinds of uh, structures that you're setting up in your business through meetings yeah uh, the culture starts to take place too you know it's not you know part might not be part of the agenda but it's uh, the culture of you know just having that feeling and that great work environment yeah that uh, meetings can do too so that's pretty cool awesome yeah so let's talk about the sales meeting. So, I mean, we do the all, all, team, all crew meeting, and then we also do a team leader. We have guys that lead trucks, so there's a separate meeting just for them, and it's a lot of leadership training. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going in there and we're talking about how are you working with your guy? Where are they at in their progression? Um, how are their skills, their hard skills, and then how are their soft skills? And then we taught, we, we're basically training the trainer, coaching the coach, 
So that's a really cool meeting too. Similar structure, different content, but the sales meeting, uh, that's really cool. I really mm -hmm. enjoy the sales meeting. And you were a sales manager for a yeah. long time. Yeah, for a little bit. Uh, you know, holding, holding sales guys accountable can be a little tricky because sales guys like to be out selling. So, you know, yes. you know, trying to herd them together is like herding a bunch of sheep together. But, you know, it's about the consistency and getting them in there. So back when we were doing, I was the sales manager doing sales meetings. It was a lot of the same structure, starting out with a quote, uh, obviously a quote that, had to, that pertains to sales. I've got one. Uh, Always um, do your best. What you plant now, you will harvest later. Og true. Mandino. Great, great uh, author, Og Mandino. So, uh, yeah, so s starting out the same structure, I think, um, having a, a PAL, a purpose, agenda, and a lim uh, length uh, is always important. Uh, but something, talking about the numbers and getting your sales team to talk about the numbers, or if you don't have a sales team, your sales guy. Um, or if you are the sales guy, knowing what your numbers are on a daily basis and having a way to track uh, what you're doing is very important. And having the people understand that, that it is important for them to track it because there's so many, there's a lot of money that's going into getting that funnel to be filled so that they have uh, leads. And, they, mm. uh, and it's important not just to be passing those leads along, but it's important for them to know, you know what their close rate is. What is their dollar sold rate? What is uh, the average job that they're selling at? And there's different uh, things as a sales manager that you can look at to help them perform better by analyzing that data. Because again, hmm. numbers tell the story. And what is the story? Is he closing at 500 to $800 over 60, 70% of the time? But anything that's over you know, a thousand dollars to twenty five hundred is like thirty something percent of the time. Then we know that there's a, uh, something that needs to maybe be tweaked in the sales process, or maybe there's you know because sales guys buy they they sell like they buy, and if they if they buy cheap, they're going to sell cheap. Hmm. So maybe there's conversations about things in their mindset too that we can talk about as well in. Uh, in, uh, in that sales meeting. So giving that feedback in a sales meeting to a sales rep, having something educational uh, yeah. in there, uh, I think is really important too, where you're educating your salespeople, uh, recommending different books and audio things that they could be reading in between their appointments. Uh, having goals set too, like, you know, what are you doing to bring something to the company? You know, holding them accountable to that. You know, you don't want to have somebody who's just an estimator or an order taker that goes out and just takes leads. But you want somebody who's a go-getter that's going to be going out there and talking about that. What did you do this week to bring in, uh, you know, business to the company? You know. Yeah. Um, so and, I think you hit on two big things there. We didn't really talk about this yet, but when you have goals that are preset, that's that's what the the basis of having a meeting is so if you know your sales goal for the year is a million and the for the month is a hundred thousand so each day you've got to sell x amount now we've got something of a baseline mm -hmm. so having goals is is hugely important uh before you're going into these things right Absolutely. yeah yeah um and i love uh educational so on the sales meeting, I love that our field supervisor goes to the sales meeting and he'll typically bring some sort of product knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, and give them an education on something, whether they, it's something that they missed or something that they just need to brush up on. It's really cool. So like you said, each meeting um, basically has the same elements. Um, and what I love that uh, Danny did, instead of Danny doing the quote each week, he started to have anybody who was coming to the meeting bring their own quote. And I thought that was really cool. And that's a really important part of a meeting. It just can't be the person running it talking the whole time. If you want to have a bad meeting, then you should then talk the entire time. The worst meetings were the ones that I talked the entire time. That when somebody has an idea that I would be like, oh my gosh, I was thinking the same thing. And I just stole that from them. I read this great book called Multipliers. And she talked about 
um, accidentally diminishing your people. And when you are the person with the loudest voice in the room, and unfortunately I'm really loud, and I am creative, I am passionate, so all those things, you put me in a meeting, and I can easily make everyone else quiet. Because, you know, we're going to roll, and I think that we're, like, I really think like, oh my gosh, we were brainstorming, that was awesome. Meanwhile, it was probably the Ryan show. And I love this analogy that she gave, that if you're running a meeting, you take five poker chips and you put them on the table and those are the only five times you're going to speak during that meeting and as you're listening and everything's happening if you really feel like you should say something you put that poker chip up and you say your thing and now i've got four more so i started to actually draw circles on the top of my page and what was really awesome about that practice was i would typically only use about three because I was so conscious of, like, uh, what would I have just added? Why would I have just said that? That probably could have taken three or four minutes for no value. And like you said earlier, when you let other people start doing it, you think you want to say this thing. And it's funny that I'd say 90% of the time, somebody else says it. The thing that you really wanted to interject. Yeah. The, the, the important part about that whole strategy is we as uh, leaders and owners uh, sometimes need to be use restraint and be patient because what you just said is true and I see myself doing that too when I'm in management meetings and any meetings that we're doing um, I will even the peer group calls that we do for our franchisees uh, those meetings monthly that we do um, I, I, I let everybody else talk and what you find by the time you get to the end of the meeting is that the thing that I wanted to interject somebody else did it and it's much better that if it came from somebody else's mouth then it mm. comes from mine, you know, because like they say, you know, if it comes from the horse's mouth, no one really listens. But if somebody else says it, that isn't the head guy or whatever. And, you know, other people say, oh, wow, that's interesting. And it, I've experienced that many times yeah. uh, in our, our business uh, over the last 21 years uh, where that has happened, where somebody finally said has their aha moment and it had nothing to do with me. And it's like, I've been telling them to do that for like the last 10 years. <laughs> and finally, they're doing it. Uh, so I, I think something that makes it really, really sucky as the person running a meeting is when you look at the faces of the people in the meeting. And yeah. they're like this, or they're fidgeting with their phone, or you think... Doodling. <laughs> doodling. You know, when you, when you look you around doodling, the room... Caleb? <laughs> when you look around the room and you don't see the buy-in, it makes you never want to have a meeting again. Right. Or you have a meeting and somebody brings up something that's really annoying, like that they're unhappy with. And now all of a sudden you've got four or five people that are, you know what? I never thought about that. That's kind of, yeah, we need to talk about that. And all of a sudden you went from trying to rah-rah your team mm -hmm. to now you've got this issue that you're like, what in the world? If I didn't have this meeting, I would have never had to open up this can of worms. Right. So there are definitely things that can happen, but I, I, I think whether they happen in the meeting or outside the meeting, things are happening in your, in, your, in your organization. And our number one responsibility as a CEO or anybody who's running a department or meeting is the culture starts with you. And meetings are a great way to get a, get a, get a grasp on that culture and, and fix things. So I'll tell you my favorite part of the sales meeting, just like the, uh, the installers that do the shout outs at the end, at the end of a sales meeting, they all take a turn to talk about their biggest win of the week. And what's so cool about that is it used to start out like, oh yeah, I got a person, they called for gutter cleaning um, and it ended up being a $3,500 gutter and guard job. And it's like, oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> but what we realized is we weren't learning anything. Mm. So when we, then they started to do the wins in detail. And it is awesome that they're like, all right, so I got to the house and the person was kind of reluctant to come out. And I just you know, asked them if it was okay if we walked around together. And then as we're looking around, they're seeing the space behind the gutters and it really became obvious to them that it was more than a cleaning. So when they start to tell the story of how it led in and then how the next thing happened and how they talk to the person, everyone in the room starts to learn. Right. And that is hands down my favorite part of the meeting. And if if you don't have a favorite part of the meeting, doesn't mean you shouldn't have meetings. It means you need to probably just rethink it. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And the other thing is, so you're not, we don't want, like we just said, you shouldn't be talking the entire time. 
The best thing you do can do in a meeting is get other people to have to bring something. Mm -hmm. So I remember years ago, we read the uh, five dysfunctions of a team together as a management team. It's a great book. And I remember one of the biggest things, and you, you have a much better memory when it comes to books, but if you have meetings without conflict, then your people are not bought in, right? Is that basically what it said, that there should be conflict? And right, what it, because it, what kind conflict, of conflict? Well, it's constructive because it shows that they're passionate about it. You know, people who are passionate or enthusiastic about what they're doing, they're not really going to have any feedback. They're just going to meander through uh, and be complacent. Uh, but people who are going to speak up, uh, feel passionately about what they're doing, they have a sense of pride. So they're going to uh, speak up because they, the conflict that that's coming by is a constructive conflict because they want it to be better. And it's important to them. And that's great when you have that kind of, and the one other thing that you touched on too is learning. If you're not having meetings, you're not creating an environment in which your people can learn. And that's really important mm. uh, to organizational growth. If you're not stimulating an atmosphere and culture of learning within your organization, uh, then you won't grow. Uh, and that's important because when people are telling these stories and, you know, maybe it starts out with one sales rep and they're telling the story to you. And then eventually as you grow your business and you get more crews and things going, uh, more and more people are hearing these stories coming forth. So when the new guy comes into the company and is selling or the new installers coming into the company, you start to have with meetings because the communication is happening, which happens to be one of our core values, communication. Uh, you start to have less knowledge gaps. And that's important too in having good mm. communication and environment of learning is what I'm hearing you saying. And that's really important for growth and for meetings to be meaningful. Yeah. When should owners be included in a meeting and when should we not? And uh, that's really interesting because as you're growing, there becomes a point that your presence in a meeting is actually going to stifle the growth of that department of the person running it. And I realized that years ago when I started to run the crew leader meetings, um, they were great in my opinion. I think I did a great job. And then when uh, Job was moving into field supervisor, I was still running the meeting and then he started to take the meeting over. But I felt like we'd be in the meeting and then he'd get to an area that he might have been a little unsure about it. He'd say, hey, Ryan, why don't you talk about uh, four corner sales or upselling? And then I would then do my thing. And I realized, I was like, you know what? Me being here, he's gonna have to, for me exiting this meeting, he's gonna grow into that. And it was, it was awesome. It was probably long overdue. I probably stayed way too long, but we live, we learn. That's an important point right there in, in the developing of leaders within your company. Uh, especially you do it through meetings uh, we do it through in a lot of different ways but you know removing myself out of the equation allows people to have the opportunity to be able to fulfill those shoes and they're gonna want to do that especially somebody who uh, is naturally wanting and desiring leadership and we all have people like that in our, our business and the way that we create that opportunity sometimes we need to get ourselves out of the way and not micromanage it yeah, will they probably say some things that maybe I wouldn't have said or maybe I would have added to or whatever? That's fine. Um, mm. You know, letting them grow in that role and then giving them feedback, you know, after it's over or something to help them in a, in a way that's uh, constructive. Uh, but upbuilding that person, allowing them, because really when, when we're growing and scaling our business through meetings, uh, we, we need to replace ourselves. And we need to teach that to the people that are in leadership roles in our company too, as we continue to scale that. They have to have that same kind of mentality as well and giving the people underneath them and creating that kind of depth through meetings is super important, I believe, to not having to be involved in everything that goes on in the business. And I think as owners, what the most important thing from what you're saying is that, you know, we need to be having higher higher level meetings too with the people who are managers and that's something that we're talk talk about a little bit too is top level meetings what does that look like all right so we've got the top level meetings. so so far we've talked about you know if people are interested in the meetings that we have we have a all crew meeting um, we have a you know crew leader meeting we have a sales meeting 
those are the main ones. And then um, there is there is the level 10 meetings from a book called Traction, a uh, great book. Uh, level 10 meetings, we do that with our management team and it's a certain structure that I love. It actually transformed our meetings uh, for, so there's in the business meetings, everything that we just talked about are in the business meetings. Mm -hmm. So we're working in the business, whether it's in the field, in sales, in marketing, uh, in the back office, front office, whatever it is, those are in the business, day to day things that are happening. When you have your management team together, and again, this is after you, you've scaled and you know, you're probably, you know, whatever that is, you have a team of people doing the uh, installations, a, a sales team at some point, some back office, you end up having a management team. And those meetings are awesome because we really just take the first five, 10, 20 minutes, basically five, 10 minutes, and we're going over all the KPIs. How are our sales? Our goal is this, what's, what's, where are we at? Okay, good, yes, no, okay, move on. So what's really cool is as you go down your key performance indicators, whether it's a revenue number, close rate, leads, you name it, reputation, if everything's good, you just move on. And what's really cool, and I'll, and I'll tell you, this is probably a huge tip for whatever type of meeting you're running, most meetings can get off track. Somebody's like, all right, well, we're having the, uh, the Christmas party next, you know, in a month. And then all of a sudden you, you, you went from a production issue to trying to plan your company party for the next 30, 45 minutes. What's really cool about level 10 and when you're running a meeting, if somebody brings up something and it's an issue, let's just say you're halfway through the month and you're not even close to the leads you need. You would say, you know what? That seems to be an issue. We're going to talk about that when we're done going over the, the other stuff. So we get in the habit in meetings, as soon as something comes up, everything becomes important. I remember we used to have like three hour meetings that were supposed to be an hour oh, because everything boy. all of a sudden is important, right? And that was our <laughs> fault, you know? We yeah. were learning our way through it. Don't be afraid to fail your way through it. I remember when we first started meetings, we just knew we were supposed to have them and we just, it was non-negotiable. So I would just say, and I know I gotta go back to my thought, but. Your meetings, once you start them, they're non-negotiable. You don't, you, don't you don't cancel them. You don't keep moving them because you got busy or you, you yeah. know, it rained yesterday. We just got to get it done. And then also it sends a message to your employees too that, oh, here we go. We're going to start doing these again. I wonder how long this oh, is going to yeah. last. Good point. Right? So. Yeah. so when you're in the level 10 meeting, when that topic comes up that needs discussion, you, you basically put it to the end, end of the meeting. And a level 10 meeting with your management team, your goal is to get through that small stuff and then anything that pops up, you put to the end of the meeting and then what's really cool is you have, you have about 60 minutes to solve issues. Mm -hmm. So if we're gonna go and talk about leads being, we're not trending towards the goal, we can say, well, what's the issue? Well, the issue is this or that or other thing. We might find out, well, it's a drought, it's this or, you know, whatever the reason, and now let's discuss it. So you guys in that meeting, when that's happening and you uh, put it to the end, is does the team, the management team, You're right. prioritize which ones that the day, is there like a vote or a show of hands? Yeah. Which one that we want to talk about? You know, which, what is the most urgent? Definitely. So you might have leads, um, company party, uh, whatever the topics are, you will have three, four, five, it could be we want new software or should we hire a cleaning company to clean this place? It could be anything that comes up and, um, and then basically you kind of real quick say, all right, what's the number one issue? And somebody normally is like, that one. I'm like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And it's, the whole thing is to not move on to another issue until it's solved. Oh, so great. in these meetings, you're actually solving something you're not just talking about a bunch of stuff and leaving going, we're no better than when we started. We actually have four more issues that we didn't know we have. And that I would assume too in that meeting, well, I've been a part of these kind yes. of meetings, so I know. So uh, things are being delegated to the, to the person who seems the most fit to, to uh, either uh, yes. you know, take that and solve that issue head on. Yeah. There's a lot of times that there's smaller meetings that end up happening between two individuals in that. And it's like, all right, marketing is going to get with uh, sales, okay. you know, and there's things that take 
like, you know, things we call big rocks are things that take like 30 days, 90 days, uh, you know, a year. If you're trying to implement new software for your company, that's not a to-do list. That's not something like, hey, we're going to get all new software and uh, Bob, could you have that implemented by next week? Yeah, sure. No, there's things that are big and then there's things that are to-do lists like, hey, you know, whatever. And that's a, an advantage that I see as opposed to when I was in business and it was just me as opposed to being in business the way it is now is that having a management team in a high level meeting like that allows you to lift and get accomplished a lot more of those big rocks as so to speak that you just talked about yes uh, because other people are sharing that burden yeah and they're able to do, do those those things where in the past when I was just just me and a, and a helper on a truck, I was like, you know, I, 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 it was really tough. And, and if it's you and a helper, think of it as a huddle. You might feel weird. You might even be working out of your house and you're like, what, going to sit at the kitchen table and have a meeting? Yes. I say yes. But you might just want to start with huddles. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Each, each Wednesday, we're going to have a little huddle. And I like standing meetings. Certain meetings that you don't want to take long, right. don't sit down. Right. So it's, it's a really easy concept. You don't want to have a long meeting, then be standing up. That okay. automatically makes them short. Start out with huddles, mm -hmm. then get to something a little bit more professional. Um, and as you grow, and we really believe in scaling businesses. So everything that we're talking about, if this sounds crazy to you, and if you're thinking, oh my gosh, who, when am I going to actually do work? I'm just going to be in meetings all the time. And mm -hmm. you know what? There, is a, there was a point a few years ago, I actually felt that. I'm like, you know what? I don't have an active role in any point in the business where I'm not selling the gutters anymore. I'm not installing the gutters. I'm, I got kicked off the marketing team. You know, basically all of these things. And then I was talking to uh, Jason Parker, owns an unbelievable painting company, performance painting out of uh, uh, Florida. And I was like, you know, do you ever feel like you're just going meeting to meeting? And he said, Ryan, our role as leaders is to remove obstacles for our team. That's it. So that really hit me. That was like kind of like my new job description. Remove obstacles for my team. Mm. You know, anybody on my team. And I feel like meetings give us that opportunity to hear the guys say, you know what, I, I, that job got suspended because I don't have a 40-foot ladder. It was on the other truck. Well, why is it on the other truck? Well, because we dropped the other one and it's, it's broken. And, I didn't, and it's like, all right, well, let's get you another 40-foot ladder. So don't drop 40 foot ladders. <laughs> it happens. But what's the obstacle? What's what's stopping somebody from becoming better at their job? Do they need better equipment? Are the computers slow? I mean, there's things that people need and really, you know, as small as it can be or as big as it might be. You might have a culture issue. You might have something that's really terrible happening in your company. And meetings give you that opportunity to remind everyone where the goal is, to see where we're at to remove obstacles for our team. So if we were to sum this all up, I would say that uh, one of the things, over, overall things that meetings do is meetings make you money when they're run properly, right? A hundred percent. So, you know, if they're not run properly, then it is a waste of time because you are paying people to be in a meeting. And if it's not meaningful, then you're wasting time and money. And, yeah. and that's how, you know, it, people will feel about it and you might even feel about it. So it's really important that when you st establish it, that you do it on the right, you start on the right foot and you're including a lot of these things that we talked about today, um, which is important. So, yeah, that's great. So if anybody has questions, we'd love even topics. If there's something that you have more questions than answers for after listening to this, we'd love to get some suggestions for future topics. Um, but really, when it comes down to it, if you're not doing meetings, just start. Start small. Start with one a week. Start with 30 minutes. So the number one thing we learned today is meetings make you money. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and we hope you implement at least one or two nuggets from this episode that will give you the confidence to grow. Subscribe to our podcast to stay updated and grow with the bros.